this. I've always been like this. People that know me for the 30 years know I've known all this stuff for all that time. They can, they're in this room. They can tell you that I sat and told them things. But I wanted to tell you that this is the deception that is coming very quickly and, and you need to know about it. And your kids need to understand it too. And they need to communicate with you if they have certain things happening to them. They need to tell you. The church is not going to do anything about this. And that's why it's been allowed to happen. It's because the church does nothing. Okay, so we have all authority. We have, we have the, the power and the authority to stop these things. However, this is not fairy tales. It's not make-believe. This is not conspiracy. These are friends. The stuff that I have was, is, is people that I know. Okay, all right, then, this is, this conference now, now that we've we got the graduation out of the way, everybody went through the narrow way, congratulations, all you students, you went through the narrow way, and I'm so glad your head fit, fit through the narrow way. <laughs> so, which is the most important thing about graduation is, graduation means um, now the real work begins, you know, so, um, Anyway, because it's receiving from heaven, this is one of my uh, favorite books. They're all my favorite books, but this one in particular is, is something that Jesus said to me in prayer one day. He said, um, my people are giving, but they're not, they're not receiving. And he said, you gotta teach on people to be good receivers as well. Because what happens is, is that in every generation, if you look, we get into works but it's really, it's really tricky. You know, you understand what, what I say with works is we're, we're saved by, by grace through faith. So we believe we receive salvation. We confess with our mouth what we believe in our heart. And when we receive Jesus Christ, but then after that, that is like the starting point for your life. After that, you're supposed to produce fruit in keeping with that repentance, Jesus said. So receiving is very important so that you don't get into works. I mean, you know, at the, at, at your third, when you're working three jobs like I did in college, I worked three jobs, you know, I would forget where I'm at, like what job I'm at. I, I, would, I would be up all night as a security officer and there are times where I went to class with my gun on. <laughs> I'm like, I forgot one step. I'm supposed to put that in a safe. I mean, I didn't have time to, to change my uniform. I, I spent all night patrolling the college campus and I was the only one, so I was armed. So I, I asked questions after I shot, you know, and that was the deal, you know. And I, I wasn't allowed to kill anybody. I was, they, my boss said, just make them limp and call me. And I'll, <laughs> but, but when you're by yourself, I mean, there is, you know, there is nobody to call, you know. Who are you gonna call? <laughs> Ghostbusters are even sleeping, yeah? <laughs> Okay, so I would, for, I, would, I would, at that point, working three jobs just to stay in college, and I, was, I had college loans and things like that, that I, from the previous one, then the Lord paid that all off. But my point is, is that I, at the third job, just to stay at, at Rama, just to stay and pay my bills at Rama, um, it got to where you, you click over into survival mode just just to, sur just to do it, and then you're in works. You, you, you don't even know, like if you talk, talk to somebody, you wouldn't even know when that happened, it just happens. And it's that way with your relatives, at what point do you say, you know what, I just can't talk to them today, I've had it. I, I can't talk to them, I, I can't take that call. And I get to that place where I can't take that call. You know, it, it's the same thing with, um, you know, the, the uh, aviation part of it, you know, I don't know if you know, understand like aviation and how involved that is with everything, but you're pretty much in the books the rest of your life. But I felt like I was supposed to, I was being instructed to get more familiar with other airplanes. And so that was good that I did that because I fly all d different types of airplanes for different purposes. Like when we go overseas, I have to know, a, a, you know, a Gulf Stream uh, which is like very complicated and it, 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 you know, can fly for 14, 15 hours, you know, with all our staff on it. And so that has a lot of different information about that airplane than the, the airplane that I fly 
here in the United States. And then there's all kinds of other things that we're doing, like with, where there's different information I gotta remember. So I'm, I'm, I'm in an airplane and I'm thinking, okay, I'm in this airplane, so I have these set of numbers. And so like, even when I'm flying with Chris, I have, he's sitting in back of me in the fighter jet. I'm asking him questions like, okay, how's my speed? You know, everything. And, and I'm glad that I'm not flying by myself because I got five different airplanes in my head. Okay, at, at a certain point, it becomes works. It's no longer fun. It's no longer fun. And so I, I use these situations to grow because certain things are harder and they press me, whereas like other ones are not as, as challenging and I'm not growing, I'm not expanding. I need to be able to expand in my mind as well as my spirit. But it gets into works. And you're no longer receiving. And the devils know it. And, and you're running off of your, your chemicals and your adrenaline, all your, your body chemicals. You're running off of that because you're in a survival mode. And that's what's happening right now in the body of Christ. They're not receiving anymore. We've gotten back into works. So I, I say this about this weekend because this subject is very important. You got to learn sometimes to, to receive again and, and to know that this is by grace, that this is a gift. Even, even faith is a gift. It's a seed that was given to you by God. It's his faith, as, as Dr. Wingate was saying last night, which seems like a week ago. <laughs> I have God's faith because it was a seed that was given to me. I developed that but I can't get into works over it. If the mountain's not moving, it may be that I'm in unforgiveness. Because it says in verse 25 and 26, it, which is never quoted, I'm so glad that he's educated enough to know that there are more verses around there <laughs> than 23 and 24 of Mark 11. But it says, it says it, it's the showstopper. It, Jesus t says the showstopper is if you're in unforgiveness, then... Um, you got to like stop the whole process and go take care of that. Um, and there's a reason for that. And it has to do with these entities, these, these entities I want to talk to you about this morning in Coffee Talk. So uh, anyway, because of all this, the Receiving from Heaven book, um, the Lord is asking me to do this because um, the Lord asked me to buy like, like eight to 10 pallets of my books and then sever my relationship and then go on my own. So I bought like 10,000, 20,000 of, of my own books, but they, they sell out in a year. But it, it was, a, the reason I did it was because the Lord said everything's gonna go up quadruple in price. The paper's gonna go up. And so, you know, you saw what happened four years ago at the pump, at the gas pump. Well, it happened with everything. So it happened with books. So books, uh, books are like, for my cost is two to three times more than what it used to be. And I used to get my books for a dollar. So I bought 20,000, 10,000. Sometimes, sometimes I would buy that twice a year, sometimes every year. But the Lord said that um, at this point, this point right now is to start to do this. Hold your book up and tell people, listen, if you don't have money, just go get one. But I knocked it down more than half to $8. So it's back here on the table. It, you need the study guide. I gave you the study guide. I gave you the CD. The Lord, through, through all the process of my learning in psychology as well, psychology, sociology, and then what Jesus taught me, because you have to understand yourself too. You have to understand your brain, you have to understand how you work, how God made you. So you can't throw out psychology, you just can't make it your God, it's not your religion. But there are things that you need to understand about yourself and he told me that there was total saturation, total immersion. So you have the, 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 you have the study guide, which is study. You have the book, which is your reading. You have the audio, which is the CD that I gave you. 
So you, you listen to this so that everywhere you go on one subject, if you notice, that's what I do with everything. So that's to a total immersion. So you, you put your book down, you go and study in your study guide, then you have to go to work, you put this in your car. I don't have any eight tracks, but I mean, if you, <laughs> but you, you're continuing to listen to it. And, and Jesus said, if Satan, Satan brainwashes all of, of the people all their life, then you can, you can brainwash with the word of God. You can wash their brains, you know? And um, so that's why I do this. But th just so you know, I mean, we all know, if, if you're having a hard time, you can go back and, and you know, and go back and take something from the book table. I, I really don't care about that. Because the only reason I do this is because most of my mentors don't do that. In fact, I know some of my mentors, they've never done that. And they won't. And I know, I know, I know one person that you know that it happened to him. And it was Andrew Womack. But I won't tell you who the minister was, but he went to a prosperity conference and he couldn't, him and his wife were, couldn't afford the, the tape series on prosperity. So they asked if they could have it and, and they were told no. And that's when Andrew said, I will never do that to anybody. Yeah. Well, look at him now. And so if you notice, he says, if you don't have money, one will be given to you, right? Does he still do that? Or has he been, has he gone into the cartel? No, I hope not. <laughs> he is such a precious man. <laughs> so anyway, um, these, these, I give you these as a seed, but um, if you want to go on, um, if you want to read this, I mean, I, I, I put everything I have into this because we're in this time right now where we're not receiving from God. We've sown enough. It's time to reap a harvest. And, and you have to have a mode, you have to get out of the mode of works about your finances, about your giving. Do you remember the story when I was in Burbank, California and I was handing out hamburgers and I ran out and I had a $20 bill and the Lord said, give it to that homeless person. Do you remember that story? It was an angel. I handed the 20 to her. Uh, that was, I mean, that how, how financially struggling we were was that $20 was to get Kathy a Christmas gift. It was, I had saved it from my per diem, put it in a side pocket in my wallet for a Christmas gift to get her some jewelry. And now she gets purses. <laughs> with big purses. With but... At the time, I, I saved that. And the Lord said, give that to that homeless lady. And when I handed it to her, she took her, her, her uh, blanket off her head and she, she called me by name. And she said, Kevin, you have been obedient. Keep it because thus saith the Lord, you're gonna need it because this country is going into some hard times for a long time. And she warned me and then she disappeared, her and the cart, in front of a whole bunch of business people that were all there in this area of business where I was handing out burgers. So there is times where if you do the right thing, you'll get it right back and a word from God. So it's these things, hundreds of stories that I have of these kind of things happening to me is what has shaped me personally. And it's very hard for me to get into works now because I know that that's my, that is a slow death. That's, 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 the, and that's the beginning of the end for me if I get into works. Do you understand me? Things will start to dwindle. Okay, all right. Um, we're having deliverance school today, this afternoon. So this book, I wrote this over Christmas. I wrote this in two days and um, it's, it's just volume one, They Must Go. And uh, we're gonna talk about that today. It's very important, especially here in Phoenix for you to understand this. It's gonna be, it's, a, it's, it's a, the first volume is, is, is not coughing up demons. So it's not gonna be a sloppy session at all. It's just, it's, it's the warning shot across the bow that needs to be done. Okay, um, also, I, at Christmas time, 
the Lord reminded me, he goes, where's that uh, Caring for the Elderly book that, you, that I told you to write two months ago, or, or a year ago? And I said, well, I'm still waiting for uh, uh, somebody that I had signed to it to do it, to, to get me the information by helping the elderly for a year and then giving me all the data. Well, I didn't get the data. So I called over Christmas, I said, I'm just gonna leave it there because I'm still a little upset about it. So um, I said, you know what, forget it, I'll just do it myself. So I did it myself and here it is. So Caring for the Elderly will be actually given to the, the fellowships leaders that have fellowships because it's, it's gonna be one of, of, of about 20 volume set of, of different things that's going to develop you into a really good pastor. Um, and these are just things that are caring for the elderly uh, is the first one of these things. And so um, that's, this is available if you want it back there for a really, really good price. And then we're going to put it, we're going to put it on our shop and our store. And then those who are facilitating will get that. Um, if I'm getting boring, please just tell me I'm, I don't want to do this anyway. I just, I need to, I need to do these because um, they, I really, really give everything into everything I do, and it's not worth anything unless it's in your hands. So if it, if you can't afford something, just take, just, just receive it. Don't take it. Receive it. <laughs> Amen. Okay. All right. That is enough of that. Uh, Pastor Jan, um, Doctor Jan, now. Uh, <laughs> would you come up here, um, Dean, Dean, um, Dean, Mike? actually became a doctor last night too, but, <laughs> but, but because, because um, he, he is so humble, he didn't give himself. And I said, well, at least pay your, one of your daughters to walk the line for you, you know? <laughs> so anyway, we want to honor him um, uh, right now. So Pastor Jan, here's, you got the microphone. Okay. And I uh, hope Pastor Mike is here. He didn't go there. Okay. Dr. Mike. So you can Let go up me here just in front. say a couple of things about up front, Pastor yeah, Mike. Up front, yeah. Here you up go. Here, up. up here, up here. <laughs> this man, I am telling you, he has been my boss for a little over a year. And I am telling you, he is the kindest, um, most loving, helpful. He'll bend over backwards to help you in whatever the situation is. He'll research it. Um, the Warrior Notes team is just amazing. I've never worked for a group of believers like this. And <clears throat> Pastor Mike really exemplifies what Dr. Kevin and Dr. Kathy really want in Warrior Notes. So it is such an honor for me to pass this doctorate on to Dr. Mike. I wished his, he could have t taken the stage, but even, even one of his children, but all of them were working. And uh, that's a, that in itself is just a testimony of all that has gone on. So um, on behalf of Warrior Notes, congratulations, Doc, <laughs> Dr. Mike. <laughs> you want to say a word, sir? <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Somebody take a picture. Okay, can somebody take a picture and get, send it to me? Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So now, into the good stuff. Okay. The, the thing about being spiritual, can I talk to you a little bit about this? Yeah. Jesus was spiritual. Jesus was spiritual, but he, he was at times uh, a lot stronger than what we relay to people. And um, I, I noticed this about him because when he's, when he's uh, appearing to you and other people, he is obviously going to be the same as he was in the scripture. But if you read the scripture, it's really interesting how after meeting him and then reading the scripture, I saw that I was, I don't know how to say this. Do you, can you understand if, I, if you like airbrush stuff out? Like if you brush it out or you airbrush it, this is what NASA does to a lot of photos. You know, they airbrush stuff out, and there's people that are on staff that do that. So they have to, every photo that comes in, they got to take stuff out that's, that we're not supposed to know about and see. And they've been doing this for years. And so people on their deathbed have said stuff like that. 
they, that they, that's what they did. And they said, you know, they confirm a lot of things that you suspect about uh, flying objects and things like that. But what, this is what we do. We make Jesus accommodate our condition. We, we, cause, we cause him to become what we think we need. But what we really need is a backhand. <laughs> you know, in, in other words, we need discipline. We need to say, you know what? Just shut up. You know, like, does Jesus have to say, you know what, I'm talking? Can you just, like, hold it? I'm speaking now. This is, this is my time. This is, in other words, the, did he, if he showed up at your church and you were the pastor and he said, you know what, this is my church. Would, because of a survival mode and you're, and you're on defense about church splits and people being crazy, you, you've taken the church over because you're in a survival mode. It's the same thing with your finances. People will start to uh, click over and we all, we all get like this. Okay, so when I met Jesus, he was a lot stronger in his personality than what I had been portrayed. So my, my idea is this, if you're in sin and you go to church, you shouldn't walk out of church alive. I mean, according to Ananias and Sapphira. Okay, I'm just saying this, now see what happens? Now, really, half of you feel like you just want to get up and say, you know what, I just should have gone golfing. <laughs> I thought this was coffee talk. But, but here's the thing is, there's stuff in the scripture that is not tolerated, and yet it it's, appears to be tolerated today. But that's what we do. So I want to talk about spirituality first, because we, are, we, we don't understand the different realms. You see... Jesus gave us authority through his death and his burial and his resurrection. All of the process of what he gave us was that we're supposed to trample on serpents and scorpions and have power over all the enemy. So what's happening now is you see all this stuff that's happening and it feels like we're just being overrun and we're hijacked and we're, we're being um, dominated and told what we see, what we hear. And, um, you know, it doesn't, there's just such unjust balances on everything. It's just, uh, it's just unjust. And, you know, and so, you know, you know, my favorite newscaster that you love here in, in this area, you know, she has to have a, something recording because in, I, I love Arizona because you can record something and you don't have to tell somebody that you're recording them. So you, you literally have to have a tape recording of someone that no one would believe would be a turncoat. You have to actually have a recording of it for anybody to believe that your own could be working against you. Does everybody follow me? Because I don't want to have to mention names because they'll pull, a, you know, then I'm, then I'm already labeled, you know. Okay, so somebody has to do something that causes it to be a whistleblowing thing in order for you to actually believe what you suspect. You suspect it, but you have no evidence, right? Okay, so what happens is when you meet Jesus on the day that you meet him, if you haven't met him beforehand as far as in person through an appearance, supernatural event, if you, if you go your whole life and you get the biggest reward, which is you believe in him, but you've never seen him, which he said was the biggest reward, is that you lived your life by faith, not seeing him, but that you believe in him, then when you meet him, the, my, goal at, my goal here and what, I, what Kathy and I do and all of our staff is that there's not a big difference when you stand before him, what you perceived about him and how he really was. I had succeeded in your life and the Holy Spirit had succeeded in helping all the body, including me, and others to get you to a place of maturity where there was no real big step. But for me, going to Rama, having everybody I know lay hands on me, having all these supernatural experiences and, and having uh, 
also had other kind of things happen to me that, uh, that dealt with things that you don't even know if you believe in them or not, but I've already had them happen to me. And I have others that have had them happen to them. And there's all these discrepancies. When I was appearing before him, I realized that I wasn't get, being given all the information. I wasn't, be, wasn't in understanding about him and what he was saying in the scriptures. I wasn't, comp I thought I was because I had attended all these things that had people lay hands on me and I had, you know, the whole process of everything. And, you know, all the people that you would want to sit under, I sat under. I had, I mean, I, I, my favorite preacher of all times is John Osteen, not Joel, John. And he taught Ray, at Rama. Lester Summerall taught on demons and the demons didn't like him, you know? I had people like that come in and talk to me and lay hands on me. And I was mentored by those people. You know, I, I remember going here in Phoenix to Charles Capps meeting. Um, uh, I mean, I, I could, Dave Roberson, where they carried him into the pulpit to preach and they had to hold him up the whole time he preached from the power of God. Then they just carried him out. And I was going to Rhema at that time. I'm like, we need that over there, you know? We, need, we have the word, but we also need the, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We gotta be a people of the spirit as well as a people of the word, right? This was like year one. Okay, so I, as you encounter things and you're, you mature and you expand, you learn how to process information correctly. So you can't, like if you see something and you can't explain it or you can't like categorize it, which is a big thing with, with Christians. They don't seem to have the ability to, to know the scriptures enough to actually take something and file it correctly because, because it, it's not mentioned in the Bible. Okay, but it's happening. And it becomes a big deal when you realize that everything is under the earth it's not in the skies, it's in, it's in the earth, it's in those mountains over there. I'm not gonna name them, but my dad lived over there and at night they were, they were drilling out the whole mountain and taking all kinds of military equipment. I'm gonna stop right there, because I need to live another day. But this stuff is happening all over. Okay, so if you look in the book of Revelation, everything comes out of the ground. It doesn't come from another planet. Jesus, there are scriptures all through the scriptures that talk about authority above the earth, on the earth, and under the earth. There's scriptures that talk about that, but we just brush over it because we don't understand. We don't understand realms and dimensions, and we, don't, we, we, we are judging everything by a fallen world. So that's what I want to talk about spirituality is that Jesus, as the son of man, because he did everything as a son of man so that he could transfer it over to us. He couldn't tell us, you're gonna do these things and even greater if he had done things by the son of God because we would never qualify for that and you wouldn't want to. You'll, you'll, that position is already filled and you know, they're, not, they're not taking applications. So. so you've been given a certain portion and out of that portion, it's all doable if Jesus said it's doable. Okay, so when he would minister, even if you look at his first day, not, not talking about the, 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 the wedding at Cana because that was his mom's fault. And she was meddling. Okay, I'm talking about when he went into the synagogue and started preaching and demons started manifesting and they go, who is this guy? And he, he read a, the prophecy about himself. And he goes, it's been fulfilled in your ears. Well, that went over well because this is my church. Who does he think he is? Okay, so and at that point when he did that, it's, it says that just during that week, people went to push him over the brow of the hill that right away, right away, like the first week of ministry. He probably hadn't even received his first round of offerings from his partners yet, you know? <laughs> and they're already wanting to kill him. And it's, what does it say? It, because it wasn't his time, he just walked through the crowds. Okay, so how do you walk through a crowd? 
okay, what I'm trying to tell you is, is I know this, you're gonna be told this by the Lord when you get to heaven, is you're supposed to be able to escape like that too, if it's not your time. But see, we can't even figure out like why grandma died. We're worried about like, well, why did she die? Why did she die of that disease? Why, why are people dying when they're 30 years old? Why are kids disappearing? A million kids a year are disappearing. You know, we, don't, we don't know how to process this stuff because we don't understand all the realms, the realms of influence, the realms of authority. So what you need to do is you need to unload your life. If you have outstanding warrants, you need to take care of them. If you, if you owe taxes, you just pay them. You gotta unload your life. You, you can't get nervous every time you see a police officer. You can't live that way. You have to unload your life with the responsibilities down here and do everything you can to unload from that so that you can sleep at night and you can wave at a police officer with all your fingers, not just one, all of them, <laughs> wave. And, and when, when they pull you over, you just put your hands on the wheels and if you have, a, if, if you have any outstanding warrants, you tell them. If you, have a, if, you, if you are concealed in carry, you tell them. And you just sit there like this until they tell you what to do. Don't take your seatbelt off. Don't do anything. You, you, this, this, this is unloading yourself, okay? It's the same thing when you get into situations. There will come a time where you will encounter something and you will walk away, have said and done the right thing, and it won't be, I wish I should, should have said this. I should have, I should have not done that. You, you get to where you're ready to act appropriately in every situation. So there are certain situations you cannot win at. It doesn't matter who you are. You can't win at it if, 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 the, if authority has been in hijacked and entrenched. Because you're dealing with other things beyond what you can see. So if somebody is hijacked, like a judge, it doesn't matter what cases you bring to them. They're told how to rule. Is there any, I mean, so that's, that's how they work. So that's why I want to talk about this at Coffee Talk this morning. But I wanted you to know what spirituality really is. Spirituality is saying no to the wrong spirit and yes to the right spirit. Spirituality is discerning what's going on around you and being aware of what battles you fight and which ones you walk away from. Jesus gave us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. If you notice, those are earthbound devils. He gave us authority over earthbound, terra firma, the teraphim, terra firm. He gave us authority over devils that he drove out of people. He did not talk to Herod or Pilate until the very end. He didn't talk to Herod. He didn't go and talk to Nero. He didn't talk to any of these people. Paul did, Paul was sent to testify. But Jesus did not in, encounter that level in leadership. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to say is, he didn't go and fight for John the Baptist to get out of jail. In other words, the, ones, the level that I told you is missing from the Bibles, except for the Geneva, talks about those who had intertwined themselves with the kings of men. That is the one that, that was left out. So that there's actually more levels than what are really mentioned as far as Paul talking in Ephesians chapter six, if you weren't here last night. Okay, so spirituality is about realms and dimensions, and it has to do with frequency, it has to do with light, and it has to do with gravity. Okay, all these laws, if you look, a lot of these things are classified and not talked about. They're not talked about at all and they'll never be talked about. So you'll never find out about gravity because that's how all these objects work. There, and if you find out what gravity really is, then you understand this all. Okay, so that is why you have to see that Jesus superseded these things as a son of man. So if, it is, if you get to the place where you understand, I'm gonna be on this earth a certain amount of time, then that's the way it's gonna be. So it doesn't matter whether somebody's trying to kill you or not. It's not your time, you walk through the crowd. 
but please stay home on January 6th, okay? <laughs> Just stay home. Oh yeah, I got the call. Are you coming? No, I'm not coming. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pray for you. Send you the hand. I ain't going there. It's not the battle I'm supposed to be fighting. And I remember when I got the call and I said, no, I'll be praying for you. you you're a little stupid, but then I got the call, I'm praying and I can't stop. I was in the bedroom and I couldn't stop. I couldn't get out of my pajamas and I could not leave my bedroom and while we're praying in tongues, I said, Kathy, I said, something wrong here. These are our friends, what are they doing, you know? So I get another call. I mean, I, I actually called them and I said, what's going on? They said, well, somebody just got shot. You know who that was. And um, I said, get out of there. They said, we already are. And I'm like, so why was I told no? Why was I supposed to pray? And why was I the one that called and said, what is going on? Okay, and then the people that are involved don't have an inkling. And they're really good people and they're spiritual. So the Spirit of God wants to help you in any situation, but there are certain things you don't, you don't fight. I know this is hard because I know because I was in your shoes and it took me 20 years from when Kenneth Hagin told me this, I rolled my eyes. And it took 20 years until I realized he's smarter than me. Isn't that embarrassing? You wouldn't believe the things that he said that you could feel it in the crowd, all the students didn't agree with it. And then he ends up being right about it because he's been doing this for 50 years. And there's certain things you just don't do. You don't fight things unless you're sent to do it. So if you're commissioned to do something, then you do it. But then you have the insurance that you were sent. And with that being the assignment, you're protected. So if you want to establish a work here, you have to be told to do it because every devil in hell is going to try to stop you. Every devil in hell will, will show up at your house. If you start to pray like no one else is praying, every devil in Phoenix area will come to your house. They don't want anyone to break past a certain point because then others are gonna wanna say, can we pray with you? Can we have church with you? Uh, Can we start a school with you? And before you know it, it turns into warrior notes. And then they have to deal with 40,000 students, see? Okay, that's what, what, what the entrenchment into the government, getting into the government, these entities, that's what they're doing with information. They're keeping it out. Because if enough people find out, they're gonna start a movement of legislation requiring transparency. Okay, so what happens is the transparency had to happen because of exposure of certain people exposing certain things. So just so you know, some of these people that are testifying are actually operatives for, for intelligence agencies. And I, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, that guy. So they sent them in to whistleblow and to, to curve the narrative the way they want it. If you notice, they say, well, I can't tell you, Senator, but if we go to a secure location in a skiff, I can tell you. But what the, what the senators don't know, as soon as they go in that skiff, they sign a document that says, you are required to lie if you ever are asked about this again. So then that's why you see they're not talking about it anymore when they come out of it. Presidents, they don't talk about it anymore because they can't. So do you want that? So there's one senator who says, I'm not going in there because I'm going to be gagged from ever talking about it. Well, he's the smartest, he's the brightest light on the tree. The sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> the building where the elevator goes to the top, you know. Okay, that, that he's, he's the smart one. Okay, he's, well, so everybody's pushing, they're in works. Yeah. Pushing, pushing, pushing. And what they're getting is a bunch of misinformation. And, and the bottom line is, Probably 98% of you don't want to know. You don't want to know what I know. 
you don't want to know it because you can't you you would have to change the way you you live the way you deal with things you would never take your eyes off your children again you would never send them out alone you would never at a rest stop let your wife go into a restroom alone you would never spend the night in a state park No, you, you got to ask questions. Why are people disappearing? Okay, so that's my introduction. Now we can get into coffee talk. I need a coffee here. Okay, okay so I have to frame this because Jesus was spiritual, but he walked through walls. He walked through people. When he said, when he was forced to, to say, I am, people fell backwards because that was at a point where he just said, you know what, I've had it with these, this crowd. I am. When he said the name of God, everybody fell back. But he only pulled that a couple times. And that was the break glass in case of an emergency. But he walked in the realms of being a, a, a man with the, with, with the Holy Spirit upon him and in him. Do you understand that? That he walked in the Father's authority being sent. So the whole thing was rigged. Everything about him, his life, his death, everything about him was rigged completely. He just stayed within that realm and he died exactly when he was supposed to. He rose just like he said he would, even though nobody was waiting for him. He had, it's clear in the scriptures, he told them that he would rise after three days. There was no party, welcome back Jesus. How was hell, you know? No, they didn't, nobody's waiting there. See, that's, that's, the, that's, that's to show you a snapshot of where we're at. We're, we, we hear, but we don't believe. We don't, we're hearing, but we don't understand. We don't take time to let the Lord tell us why we're doing what we're doing. See, he doesn't just tell you to do something and, and then you get beat up for two years and then you quit, and you wonder what just happened. You have to know the how. And I'm gonna tell you the secret, all you students, the how is anticipate people's needs and provide for them, that's ministry. Amen. If you wanna have a big ministry, start handing out food. Start giving people hugs. And tell them that you love them and God loves you. And, and, and get out of this whole idea of preaching hell. Paul said that it was the revelation of the goodness of God that leads people to repentance, not the fear of hell. See, what I found is, is that if you have people that were converted because they didn't want to go to hell, the fear of hell, they're hirelings. They don't, have, they, don't, they don't understand the love of the Father. They don't, they don't have a Father, God. They have a God that was going to kill them, but at the last minute they repented. Well, what kind of relationship is that? If you, if you think about this, this is how we grew up. We were obedient out of the fear of punishment. Every day on my way, when I'm at home, and, and I do drive, I drive three miles a month. I fly th tens of thousands of miles, but I, fly, I drive like three miles a month. But every, every you know, it's, it's like 600, I could use a golf cart to get there, but I, I, I wave to the police officer. I wave to him. You know why? Because I have, I have it set on 34, it's 35, you, you get pulled over for 37, two over in my neighborhood because it's all the professional ball players that live there. And don't worry about it. We bought this house before we were in the ministry, so don't get upset. But I just wave at the police officer because I know I have it set on 34. I have no outstanding warrants. I have my cell phone off. It's the same thing with the Lord. If everything is in order in your life because you're sent, not went, if, you, if you're, everything about you is settled that I'm not dying until it's time, either are my children, 
either of my, anybody, all you students, you will live and see the power of God. You will, you will see the power of God. You will see the end of your faith. Every one of you will accomplish your task, all 40,000 of you. But it's because you've settled within yourself and you've received from the Lord. Okay, so spirituality is more about being able to deal with your rebellious child or a lying pastor or someone who is stealing your money that believes in faith or a prophet who's just speaking from their own soul. See, you have to, you have to be settled. They're like, well, that, that um, you know, thank you, but no thank you. And you have to say, you know what? Uh, get your own money. So I tell, I tell, tell Kathy, I, we, don't, we don't go places anymore because we're, we're, we're doing church ourselves. You know, every, every day we're busy, but I leave my wallet at home. So, so the pastor can say, well, what's in your wallet? I go, you know, I don't, I don't have a wallet. <laughs> No, no, I, I, have, I have students that are calling me and saying that they're, they didn't go to church and they're like, we miss you and where's your tithe? And you know, and the Catholic church has gotten really smart. They actually just have a direct deposit. <laughs> no, they do. They just take 10%. This is the temple tax, just like it was at the time of Jesus. They had a temple tax. Okay, I'll get, I, I don't want to get into, we've got to talk about what's, that they never left. That's the subject this morning, coffee talk. Um, they never left. And um, this is thousands of hours of study. Um, I, I have all my notes, I have all the data, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna give you some key words, I'm gonna give you some key people that you can look up yourself. It's thousands of hours, it's a rabbit hole. When you're done, when you're done, like I have no questions now, the first study I did was 110 books and many interviews with people. And at the end of that, I told Kathy, I have no more questions about UFOs. And so I threw everything away. And some of them were one of a kind documents that nobody else has. I, I, I destroyed them all, destroyed all the books. I had no more questions. What I determined was is that people are not ready for this yet. Okay, so that it exists. But because you can't process it and you don't understand the realms, you don't understand spirituality, you can't, you can't calculate this. So you just put it aside and you, you click your heels three times and say, there's no place like home. And you say, Annie M, you know, and where's Toto, you know? Because it's, it, you wanna go into a make-believe world because what's being presented to you seems make-believe, but somehow in your spirit, you know that we gotta deal with this stuff. And Phoenix is a hot spot. I'm so glad I'm not here anymore because I was literally have to change direction in my airplane to not hit something that the, that the controllers didn't even have on their radar. I'm talking like 17 of them. And it just happened to me over the Gulf. After I dropped my crew, up, you know, my, my staff off, I'm flying, me and Kathy and the other pilot, flying across the Gulf. There's nobody there. There's no one there. And all of a sudden there's over 30 targets in my path. but there's nobody else up there except us. It's late at night. But this has happened so many times. Do you want to report? No, I don't want to report. Because then it doesn't go to the FAA. It goes to some other department that nobody knows about. And then they contact you and they say, you're gonna have a psychological evaluation and you get that put in your file and then you get one more and you can't fly. And that's what happens to some airline pilots. I know. I know people that have one psych evaluation in their file. If they get another one, they're done. Why are they doing that? Because they're keeping information from you. This would be a good time to just go to Chick-fil-A if I were you. Okay, so they never left. If you, if you check out if you look at Genesis chapter six and you look at all the players there, and then you look at, at, at Genesis seven and eight and then nine, when you, when you have Nimrod, who was one of these hybrids, because it actually says that in the, in the, in the Hebrew. Okay, so he, 
was trained, all of these, these people were trained by the fallen angels to sin. So Balaam couldn't curse Israel, but he said, I'll tell you how you can get to them. You gotta get them to, to commit fornication. So he, they couldn't even pay him to curse what God had blessed. But he said, I'll tell you how you gotta get them off. That's the key. Satan can't do something to a Christian unless he's given permission. Okay, so Sumeria is the key. So you look up everything about the Sumerians and save me thousands of hours of teaching on it, okay? Sumeria. The Ur of the Chaldees is where Abram was. That is where Nimrod, when God... God stopped the tower from being built. You see these towers, they're pyramids. They're, you see them all over the earth. But what was happening was, is the flood had caused a, a separation of the realms. And gravity changed. Magnetic field changed. Don't let anybody, you know, it's gonna, this is going to start a firestorm. Because it's all classified material. But if you understand gravity and you understand what it was like before the flood and what happened during the flood and after the flood, that they had to build structures that could contact, not reach the heavens, contact the heavens. So if you study the Hebrew, you'll realize that they had these, these fallen angels had taught men how to tap in to things that were forbidden by God. And it had to do with magnetic field and gravity. Gravity is a wave. It's not space and time, it's space time. So it's, it's not, distance and time are the same thing. Don't let anyone ever talk you out of it. The people that know, the ones that are at the, the highest in universities, the scientists that are the people, they know this. How long it takes to get somewhere and the distance to get there are the same thing. Because if you can manipulate gravity, you can arrive before you left. And Jesus could walk through walls. He could walk through people. He could eat and walk through walls. Angels could pull a sword and kill 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. One angel could kill 185,000 soldiers in the Bible. Okay, the realms separated, so we see one-sixth of light now instead of the whole pie. So there's all kinds of different spectrums of, of sight and hearing that we do not see and unless we had some sort of device. But it used to be that we we're able to lift more, we could do more, we didn't have to breathe as much. God bless you, Taryn. Taryn. We got all of this classified now because through observation, which is science, they know that these things are around us and happening because of the, the way we can see in the different spectrums. So. You can understand, like, for instance, I'll just give you one. You got the, uh, the F-18 pilots with their new pods that they just got on, and then all of a sudden, through those flares, th through looking through those, and they can switch, and that's what they did. They saw objects, and it, it appears that these things were always there, but now they become visible. And not only that, they're, they're being more visible on purpose. But if you hear the stories from these guys, and you understand that technology now is allowing us to see into these other dimensions. So if you, if you wanna make a, a NASA person very nervous, you tell them that these are not from another planet, you tell them they're, that they're from another dimension you'll see a visible change in their face because see, they know that they're not from another planet. They never left here. So Abram 
was in the Ur of the Chaldees, in the heart of all this. This was in Iraq. It was right above Kuwait. The ancient Sumerians, you can see in their art, you can see these craft. You can see these alien type of, that you see today, you can see these in their art. They talk about these people that came and then did all this and then left. The Egyptians didn't build the pyramids. That's what I'm trying to tell you. These things were pre. Okay, so Nimrod was one of these, but God had had it because this was after the flood. They popped up again, it says, right? Okay, when he, dis he said, if we don't go down and confuse them and stop them, there's nothing that they imagine that they won't be able to do. This is key. So what, what do you hear? What do you hear so much about? That's just your imagination. You're more, you know, you're, you're, you're so spiritual, you're no earthly good. Yeah. Well, what, what about being so spiritual that you are earthly good? <laughs> See, the, the narrative has changed so that it makes it very, un, this is all now in our government. Mm, that's right. Because they don't want the technology to get out because it can be weaponized. You can actually make objects weightless. I've already seen it. And you can do it in your garage. You won't last long. Just put that up on, the vid on YouTube and see, see if you last till next week. But you can do that. And people have done it. People have gone from, uh, through several states. I don't want to name them because they'll, they'll do the algorithms. But they have, they have made cars that run on a gallon of water. They made it the whole way here from, you know, a place in California. Well, they mysteriously died. I guess their vacuum cleaner strangled them. It was the cause of death on their certificate. Well, you can understand that that's not really in the best interest of the, of the oil companies. Just like if you go out and eat a leaf off your tree, it's not in the, if it's not really of interest to the pharmaceutical companies if you can eat a leaf off the backyard of your tree. And it does the same thing. Right? So you understand that it's Satan has infiltrated the system and it's all about money and greed. And so they, they create a problem so that they can come and say, well, we can, we can fix that for you. So it's the same with the banking. It's the same thing with everything. Everybody's a middleman now. They're a broker. Okay, so you can understand that King James took that one thing out of Ephesians 6 because they killed everybody that wrote the Geneva Bible. But the Geneva Bible says that there was entities that had, had synchronized or meshed with the, the kings of men, which was another whole tier of, the, of what we're struggling against. You can understand then that the narrative will change in people that you've elected. to take you in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. So you can also see that Satan wants all of us to stay just 15 in each group and fight each other instead of like joining together and just, I mean, I need help. We're quadrupling every year. And the only reason that, I, that, that it's happening is because I'm not gonna ever give up and I know I can't lose. I cannot lose, I know that, but I was sent. But see, that same spirit that's in me is in all of, us, all of you. But we have been pulled away with information, the information has been withheld. So when Nimrod fled, he, he, he hid himself as Gilgamesh. And he, he went over to Ur the Chaldees, to Samaria. So everything you see about if you check it out, you can save you know, me having to teach on it. There's thousands of hours where you'll figure it out that these entities were visiting them and gave them all this ability. The ability to have stargates and portals on parts of the earth and create fields that they could enter in and, and come back and they were you know, what we call wormholes. And I know this, that, you know, you'd have to be a scientist to understand this stuff. And I, so I, that's why I'm not going to do all that. I can do all that. I can teach you all that. But 
it doesn't get you anywhere because you have eight people out of a thousand that actually get it and then then you're a target is it so to me it's not worth it to become a target for eight people because most of you are gonna it's gonna the Lord's gonna have to take you on this path itself so that's why we are to to focus on the earthbound devils terra firma serpents and scorpions we're to trample on serpents and scorpions and we have a power or the word is authority over all the enemy nothing shall by any means harm us nothing okay so the first thing that you got to accept is that there are no aliens there are no aliens this this was presented to people way back so that they can cloak themselves because they're really the fallen ones. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here and stare at you until you accept that. The, the, reason, why, the reason why is, is in the coming days, you're gonna, you're gonna see this. They're gonna go, okay, you know what? We're just gonna tell the truth, we've been lying, and these are from this, and they're gonna, I can tell you what star system they're gonna say. I already know what star system they're gonna say. I know exactly what they're gonna say. And they're gonna say we're at war with these things. And so we need to all get together and form a new world order. And we, we have, uh, we have a space force that we've been secretly developing. Except because of one president knew what was really going on, he, he actually mentioned it. So do you see that just sitting in your room and praying and reading your Bible is, is not what the Lord is looking for in these last days? He's looking for kingdom people that will just go out and stand where he tells you to stand and proclaim something that he tells you to proclaim. And then if Daystar doesn't call you to, to write a book and, and have you on the show, you're fine with that. You probably changed history and you'll never be noticed and you'll probably never get an offering for it. And, and I'm telling you, this is a deception. Listen, this is a seventh, we just celebrated our seventh year. Amen. And I'm, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done with that phase. The next phase, the Lord said, that was the planting phase. He said, now the watering phase, he said, your students can do that. Your staff can do that. The watering stage for the next seven years is the seeds have been planted and now it must grow. And there must be expansion. There must be an awareness, an understanding. You see, it doesn't matter what the devil says as long as you know the truth. But if you don't know the truth, you say, well, did God say? You know, I wish Eve would have just gone shopping that day. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying, are you? is Adam and Eve had it made, but they were in neutral. Were they really protectors? Were they stewarding what they had? Or were they lounging? You're never gonna have enough money. You're never gonna have enough cars. You're never gonna have the, the, the right iPhone. There's always gonna be something else that you're gonna need down here. They're gonna tell you what you need. They're, if you don't need anything, they're gonna create a problem and then come to you with the answer. I'm telling you this. Is there, this is how the world system's set up. So when Nimrod went there, he changed his name because God was after him. There's some interesting things I would, I would there's 3,000 hours that I've done just with Chuck Missler. So I suggest that you just dedicate the rest of your life, I'll see you in the millennium, because three, you're, if you go down that, that guy worked for the Department of Defense and got saved. That guy knows what he's talking about. He's passed away, but, but 
he, he developed the guidance systems for our ICBMs, for our nuclear missiles. And that guy understands everything I'm saying and would save me a lot of time, but you're gonna be busy for a long time. I can't, I don't, I'm not called to do this. I'm doing coffee talk, I'm called to do that. But it's just to show you that you don't know everything, but that, that you can. You can understand things, but do you wanna know it? Because you're really assigned to drive demons out of people. See, that always goes over well. <laughs> P- Pastor Jen, um, Kenneth Hagen, in our classes, Kenneth Hagen said, I can cut your prayer life down by 85%. We're all ears, you know. Because, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I'm a dedicated intercessor and prayer. And, you know, the more I pray, the more I can brag about it. So I'm going to go after it so I can at least tell people that I pray this amount every day. And then everybody thinks I'm spiritual. So, of course... I'm not really interested in cutting down my prayer life because then it cuts down my image. Can you believe this? Yeah, I know you can believe this. So people brag about what's in their driveway, what's in their hangar, what they live in. You gotta be kidding me. I didn't even see my mansion when I was in heaven. And I don't think I have one because according to scripture, I'm in my father's mansion because there's many rooms. And I'm, I'm actually just down the hall from my father. And that's the best place to be because if anything happens, I'm gonna know about it. I'm gonna bother him at night in my pajamas, right? I mean, in my father's house are many mansions or many rooms, you know? So where did it get into this mansion thing? You know, I didn't see, I didn't see, I mean, I'm not saying it's not there. Oh, there's so many people mad at me right now. Oh my God. I'm sorry, Dr. Wingate. I'm like, sorry. I want to be with my father, God. I want, I don't, I don't need a driveway. (laughs) So we don't understand the realms, you know, like all these reports of angels, they all have wings. I mean, I have, I have never seen an angel that's come to me. They didn't need wings. They flew through the air without wings because the only, there's only certain types of angels that have wings and they're in the throne to guard God and the, the seraphim and the cherubim are up there. But the angels that came, they didn't need wings. See what I mean? You gotta be kidding me. So they're, they're, they're operating under all the laws of of. of, of of lift and drag, you gotta be kidding me. They don't, they don't need any of that stuff. They don't need wings. I mean, that's your first clue with these craft that you see. They don't, they don't have an airfoil. They can be blunt objects because they supersede the laws of physics. There's higher laws that existed before the fall. So there's substance that, is, that comes to the earth through meteorites that is from that old world. And it is, those things are really high on the, uh, the periodical chart. And so I want to talk about that. I got Pastor Mike, you're going to help me, right? I, I, um, I'm not going to mention the individual's names. You probably know who they are, but I don't want to be tagged and flagged and visited by men in black. I want men in white that are angels. You know, I don't want the, I don't, you laugh at them. All that stuff is, is no longer conspiracy. That they they do not want certain information out because it's the end time deception. It's how they control people. Go ahead, Mike. We'll just do that. We'll get this. If you can open it up and I'm, I'm going to find some stuff in here. I got a bag of goodies. Um, all these people, I either have a direct communication with them at one time or or, or maybe one, one just to protect them, other people were involved. And, and this is why I was here in Phoenix and it's 30 years ago. So uh, uh, there's, a, there's one thing in a plastic thing is that, you've got that, and then um, there's a one thing, the metal thing. Mm-hmm. It's in a plastic wrap, it's that triangle. It's, de- it's in there, it's just on the bottom here. Okay, all right, so. I don't know if they, they're missing this, but anyway. Okay, so this is on a fence up there, you know. And so yeah, everybody's like Area 51. Okay, so just so you know, uh, according to the people that worked out there, 
This was moved to Utah, to Dugway Proving Grounds. Oh, they're gonna hate me for this. But anyway, it's, it's completely inaccessible. You can't get there. But that's where everything's going on now. So Area 51 is, is not the, the hot spot. So don't even try to go there and get killed or get in jail. Don't go to the White House and don't go here. <laughs> on January 6th, you stay home and, and have some baked ham or something. But this Area 51, the big, the big one, this didn't exist until somebody sued and the judge said, well, we need an address. Do you remember this? And then, so that person got hurt and sued by working on gov you know, top secret projects. And so in the lawsuit, they had to list the address and that's, then all of a sudden this does exist. You found it, okay. So it, do, it does exist. And, and so um, for many years, a lot of my pilot friends worked out there. And I'm gonna tell you a couple of stories because it's coffee talk, right? And I'll mention a couple of scriptures for all you religious people too as well. <laughs> I mean, this is just a fireside chat, okay? That's what coffee talk is. But see, this is the thing, I'm gonna save your life. I'm literally gonna make your life more effective because Christians are being lied to. Ministry is about being aware, being as innocent as a dove and as shrewd as a snake. A snake always rises up to strike and protect himself. That's the shrewdness of a snake. He hasn't determined if you're friend or foe. He goes up to strike. That's what Jesus was saying. Be as shrewd as a snake and as innocent as a dove about it. So I don't trust anybody initially, especially if they want money. <laughs> okay, so it's too late, it's too late. All my friends, they already worked out there. They already worked on stuff. One of my friends, he, was, he said, I flew an airplane out there that has never been released to this day. He said, I was taxiing in one day and I was late landing. And he said, this is, this is above black. This is above black project. This is like really, really secret airplane. He said, I was late because they have schedules where the Russian satellites fly over. So they have to have the ramps clear when the overfly happens. So they have schedules. So the projects are scheduled in between the overflies of satellites. So what happened was the Aurora project, way back, they left it out on the ramp with an overfly. So I got the photo from Russia because they put it up on the internet. This, this Russian company put it up. So I grabbed it, and of course it's gone now. But I could see that that was the Aurora project, but they, my friend had to release the airplane that he was flying that was top secret, it was called a stealth fighter. They released that because it looked a little bit like it, but it wasn't it. But they, this is what they do. They said, well, it was this. So they, they, they fell on their sword with a project of lesser secrecy to, to hide what that was really going on. But my friend said, as I was taxiing in, they're all waiting for me and I have to go right into a hangar. They, they hide your identity. You have to keep your helmet on because they can actually, the Russians can get a picture of your face from space. So even the SR-71 pilots, my friends who flew that, my, they all had to keep their helmet on. They, they actually literally started up in the hangar and just took off from the hangar, right? They, they never stopped. Okay, so he said, as I pulled up, the other project had already started. The hangar was coming up, and I'm pulling into my hangar, and he said, this, what I, what I flew has never been released. He said, but what I saw was a disc that was hovering out here. Now, that's one of like 100 stories I have. And all these people I know, these are people that I'm looking right in their eyes as they're telling me, and they're not lying to me. I can tell when a pastor's lying to me, but, I, but these guys, these pilots, they're not, they're not lying. Okay? All right. So here's what they found to keep this, because I have a couple other subjects. I still have an hour, so I have a couple other subjects I want to do. So what happened was, essentially, 
I was told by, by somebody here in Phoenix who I, has disappeared. Um, there's no birth certificate they ever existed. They, he's my friend. He told me everything. They were trying to, they were, the person who, who uh, discovered all this is still alive because he just went public with it. But the person who was trying to keep him safe, I cannot find anymore. He doesn't exist. And that's several people like that, that I cannot find now, that told me everything. And this was 30 years ago, and I've kept it quiet this long. But now that it's being spoken and things are out there, so what happens is, is if you have, um, if you have like the, this is gonna be hard for some of you because you just don't, you, you have to study this. But essentially, everything has a structure, and everything has a bond, and everything has, has uh, different things circling around to make that bond. So you have the, the protons, you have electrons, and it has to do with the field that the Earth is at. So, for instance, just to make it easy on you, and, and this is why I don't want you to be lied to anymore, is that the, uh, the chart shows as far as we can go on the earth, as far as manufacturing something, it has to be in this environment to form it or it won't form because you can't up the electrons, you can't up the bond past what the field of the environment is where you're doing it. Okay, well, gold is one notch above now what we can make. But lead is the next one as far as the bond of how many electrons and, 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 you, know, and you know, I just don't want to get into all this because it, it, if I do it, it's like a big class that lasts six months. You can study this yourself. So the, the, the normal would be like 10, 11, 16 electrons in a, in, a, in a bond. Okay, this here, this substance here has 32, which is not possible. See, and so you can't make gold anymore but it's on the earth. So something had to have happened where it fell and it notched down. So the substance exists a bit, you can't make it anymore, but how did it get here? Do you get it? And I, I'm, I'm just gonna say things, phrases, and spoil everything for you. Every, every, I'm just gonna say a couple phrases here and there, just kind of mess you up, so you'll go and look at this stuff up and we can all live a lot longer. So this substance here was, there's no way that the condition of the earth that this could actually happen. However, this was what was propelling these craft that this guy worked on, that this, my friend was protecting. Okay, so he spilled the beans, and to, to the, today, even when you watch this guy, I'm not gonna mention his name, you'll figure it out, you watch everything, this guy is not lying. But because I know it, because, of my, I, because of my, it's, a, it's a relationship that I had, okay? What I'm saying is, is that they were trying to figure out like where this came from, because this was what was, was in the craft that was causing the aircraft to become weightless. The bond was so that it, it actually negated the effects of gravity and even if you were in the craft, you could, you could accelerate. I'm talking, um, I don't want to say the stats because then I don't want to get in trouble, okay? But what I'm saying is, is that inside the craft, they do not feel the effects of any, any of the maneuvers because it becomes its own realm, its own. And so if, if you look in ancient Samaria, because I got to wrap this up, if you look in all the art, you'll see these lizard creatures that are like humans, but they're lizard. They're, they're, the, they're the, uh, the ones that are in the earth. They, they, um, the reptilian type of, of demons or hierarchy, they're the higher ones. You see them in ancient Samaria in all the art. And they came, they were the Anunnaki. Okay, uh, and um, I want you to just look all this stuff up and I'll see you in the millennium because it's gonna be a rabbit hole for you. But they all carried purses. If you look in the, all the art, they had a purse. And it wasn't as nice as my wife's, but it was like they all had it, they all had it. Well, 
the thing of it was is they had abilities that were beyond all the other humans around them. And everything, like you can, you can study this because you can actually make everything grow faster, bigger, with certain field technology and wave technology that you can buy. Well, what about the stuff that you, they know about that you, don't, you can't buy? Okay, so what happens is, is that this is introduced into a, into a, a person who's carrying it, or you use it as a propulsion system. It negates all the restrictions you would have in a craft. So there is no drag. There's, there's, there's literally nothing in your way. So that's why the objects don't appear to be winged because they, they're beyond that. They have a disc is a perfect, uh, a perfect uh, shape to change directions and go anywhere and have a leading edge. If you look, the disc has a leading edge the whole way around it. And there is no drag. There is no, because it supersedes all of the restrictions that we have to, but if, if you have this on you, and I've seen this, that you, that you can buy this stuff. You can buy, it. not this, of course, this doesn't exist. It does, it's on the periodical chart. My friend said this, and it took like 20 years for it to get on the chart. Now it's on the chart but they say we can't, we can't make it and make it sustainable. But if you, if, this, if you have something from before the flood and everything has fallen, then it could create it, an atmosphere around you where you could lift things, you could build things, you could do things because you've negated the weight of the object that you're trying to move. Is this too much? Because I could stop. Okay, so Jesus, when he came to the earth, he was like this. In other words, he was from another realm. He was from, from, from a higher realm, and he walked among men, and we beheld his glory. We beheld everything about him. We could touch him. You know, I'm, I'm quoting John. You know, he was the light of the world, but he, he, was, he came from another realm, and we beheld him, but we could not comprehend him. This is who's inside of us. So do you already understand that, that if, 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 if something came from space, just a meteorite that had this substance in it from before, is this too much? Because essentially, it, it, essentially like, I mean, they don't want you to know this, but there is a place in the United States that, that has the same rock that's on the moon, which really messes up everything. So where did the moon really come from? That's just one of thousands of things I could say to mess you up. But see, the thing that is, is when Jesus came and he gave the word of God to us, he was messing up everything that we had been told. And they killed him because what he was saying and what he was doing was from the other realm. He didn't claim to do it on his own. That's the whole key here. So the deception is, is that these things never left. And they set up things all over the earth. And they interbred. And they're in the caverns. And I've never told anybody this. But I'm telling you now, I was taken down in those caverns one time. And I saw the things that you see in Satanism and in these, the drinking of blood and adrenal chrome and all this stuff. I saw all that, but this was a long time ago. I'm talking when I was at the Assemblies of God College in 1982. So I know they're down there. They didn't come from another planet, but they have substance and relics from the other world before the flood. There's substance that is stronger bond when it's introduced to us, it seems supernatural and highly technical, but they have been cloaked. See, they're still here, but it's cloaked because our eyes don't pick it up. So that's why we have to live by faith. That's why the whole concept of faith is required 
It's the only thing that pleases God now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence or the actual title deed, it says in Greek. The title deed, the document that you have it. You don't have to have it in your hand. You just have to have it in your heart. That causes you to never give up. So he released this information and they tried to kill him. Okay, so they were trying to reverse engineer these things. Now, what I noticed was, is that these objects now are ours, is what I, 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 I noticed in all my research, is it used to be these other things, but the Germans had tapped into this so they knew of this technology. I've seen the photos of the labs over there when the, the U.S. troops opening up these labs and these, this, taking the scientists, there were 1,500 of them. They were all SS. They were all Hitler's diabolical SS people. They had tapped into the other realm. These beings had given them this stuff. And the objects that I saw in there some of them you see we adopted with our missile tech technology, but there were also anti-gravity round objects, which I have seen in photos over people's houses. Especially in 19, from 1946 and 47, the whole way. Because in 47, when it fell out, something fell out of the sky, and it did, because I've seen people on their deathbed, they took the videos down, but I've seen the videos of them confessing on their deathbed because they said, they can't kill me now. And they spilled the beans. And I've, I've seen all these videos, and I've held it for 30 years, but I'm not holding it anymore. Okay, so they took those scientists, 1,500 of them, and they brought them to Los Alamos, and they brought them to Muroc, which is now um, Edwards Air Force Base, and then they formed Area 51, and they took everything up there. So you gotta be smart. You, you've, how many of you have heard about the SR-71, the spy plane that we had? Okay, the SR-71, is, is still unbeatable, except for the classified projects, which are way better. But you don't know about those, and I, I didn't mention it. Okay, but if you look at how that was developed, it was CIA. The A-12 was the SR-71, and it was developed and funded by the CIA through the Skunk Works. Well, just do the math. And I could quit here. I probably should. But see, all, everything became industrial complex. Remember that word, industrial complex. So when it should have stayed military, they handed it over to civilian scientists. So all these men, I can name them. Von Braun is the head one. As soon as they came over here, within two years, things are flying around and being photographed, and then there, some of them are falling out of the sky and crashing. But these entities also taught the scientists how to make hybrids using human and reptilian. So the one guy that spilled the beans, the video's gone so you can't find it, I hope somebody puts it back up, but this guy who actually worked on these bodies said that they were Chinese children and, and they also had iguana because their skin was like iguana. So it was a hybrid. They didn't have any sexual organs. They didn't reproduce. They were worker bees and he called them the grays. They were about three and a half feet tall and they were interdimensional because they could operate under this. Is, okay, so I gotta quit. I, I don't know how you guys are handling all this. So Kathy, I don't know how Kathy handles it. She's, she's handled me for 30 years and I'm like, you know, we just go, we just, we pray, we go to sleep, we eat, we pray, we preach, you know, and we just like try to be behave. But the thing of it is, is I've been waiting for someone to stand up in, in the church and say, listen, we gotta, we gotta address this. Because if we don't address it, the same thing that just happened in the last four years is gonna happen 
even more. You think it, you, I'm telling you, it, this, is, this is just uh, the sandbox for the children, what you just went through in comparison to what's coming. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed the circus, but there is no other generation who allowed a president to stay in, 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 in at, this, at this point, okay? You, you know that. I'm backing out of the cave. Okay, so anyway, this, this is representative of the old world, and that's how all of these beings had so much, appeared to be so supernatural, and they grew in size. See, the word hagaborim in Hebrew is where it's translated giants, but they, it doesn't mean that they were necessarily large. They were mighty ones. They were the men of renown, men of old. It doesn't necessarily mean what you think. So you can't, you got to be careful that you're, that the rhetoric that you're being given is how you're labeling things. Because if not, you're going to miss out on the truth. They're, 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 they're trying to coach you into believing that there's something, there's certain things. And then they ridicule you when you even say something about it. Or if you see something. I want to release you to not be afraid to talk about it. Okay? All right, so this, real quick, um, this, like this right here was drawn by this guy. So this is signed by him. Don't look at his name. I don't want anything, you know, but anyway, he signed it. So Mike, can you help me? So he drew this. This is what he worked on. Okay. And then this is, a mo this is what it looks like. And this is our technology now. They reverse engineered it. Uh, there's nine of them. One was found in an archaeological dig. And then the other ones um, are different shapes and sizes. But this is the one that he w worked on. And this is kind of like where we're at right now. And this is what, what will happen over Phoenix. These are the kind of things that you're seeing and the stuff that's happening. Is it's been transferred now in exchange for people. Because they are bloodthirsty. Okay, backing out of the cave. Okay, so that's good. All right, so the, the two books, I, I got seven books out of the 110 that I want, would want you to read, and you know, it'll be done in just a couple hours, right? Um, oh, I didn't bring some of them. Oh, boy. Okay, well, we'll just do with this. All right, here's three right here that'll get you started. Um, this guy was the head of Jet Propulsion Laboratory for NASA. Okay, it's really wild is, is that he was told, asked by NASA, he developed the space shuttle, the space shuttle boosters. Okay, he actually was asked, he said, we don't want you to prove that these exist because we know they exist. That's what he was told. We need you as a head of Jet Propulsion Laboratory to, to reverse engineer and tell us mathematically and scientifically how these fly. So this book would be a good start. His daughter found all this after he passed and she published it. Oh dear. Okay, so that's this. And they're getting it to where it's getting more expensive. Like this one book, I'm not gonna tell you which one it is, but this one's $5,000 because this guy blew the whistle. He was naval intelligence and he blew the whistle and it's all documents and he, they killed him. And um, the book is $5,000. I got it from a guy that didn't know that. He sold it to me for 30 bucks, so, but don't tell him. Okay, so anyway, Paul Hill is the real deal. You can check him out. And his daughter published this book. It talks about the science about this. But of course, their narrative is he's got to push that they're aliens. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the only thing about it. The other one is, a, is a Colonel Corso. Um, he was in charge of the, the things that they retrieved from these craft when they fell. And he was, he's legit too as well. It's called The Day After Roswell. And what he explains is how, like all the stuff that you have in your house today was actually reverse engineered. And he explains how he, he, he was supposed to have, have uh, the industrial complex reverse engineer all that stuff. And so Kevlar and things like that was all, these, that was the, the suits they had on. And uh, this was all technology that was 
pre the pre world like during World War II. See, uh, say, Satan had gotten into Hitler because you can't kill six million people on the earth unless Satan is inside of you. Satan was on the ground in World War II. All right, so he he killed God's people. It wasn't it. It was over a hundred million. I mean, you know, if you if you see the counts, it wasn't six million, but. The bottom line was, is all the technology came over, 1,500 scientists. Uh, you can find the list for that. It's called P Project Paperclip, which is the next book that you would read. She, she's an, up for a uh, Pulitzer Prize. She did all the research, so I don't have to. So anyway, she, any book that she writes, any interview she does, you need to watch her. I, I just, I don't, I've never met her, but I really, I, I wanna meet her more than my favorite preachers because she, she's, she's real. So Project Paperclip is how Satan had given Hitler all this technology through witches and opening portals, and then all those scientists were building all this stuff, and the United States wanted all that. So they came and they took the 1500, and they all became head, and one of them became head of NASA. Yeah, Hitler's guys became head of NASA. And if you look, all the intelligence agencies were formed right after Roswell. Yeah, the Air Force was formed after Roswell. It used to be Army Air Force. And then stuff started falling out of the sky, and they go, well, we need to separate this, and we need to be more focusing on that. There were, I counted, I counted um, nine of these things happened in 1947. Not just Roswell, one happened here in Cave Creek. And I have photos from the Arizona Republic of it flying, and I have a, a pictures of the of Luke Army Airfield coming out and picking it up. I have pictures of it being taken away. The craft that was on there was under a tarp, but it was the same shape of what I saw in the photographs when America went into Nazi Germany and took all those things out of the caves. Is there anybody here? Okay, so. The whole, the whole thing is always that Satan goes underground and he brews and he gets ready for the next thing. And the only reason I'm sharing this with you is because I, wa I don't want anyone to be caught by surprise to where you're paralyzed, to where you can't migrate and navigate through through your walk with God because of these things that are going to be presented to shock you and to ruin, try to ruin your equilibrium, your stability with God, okay? So anyway, I think I have, I got lots of other toys here, but I think I'll just, um, well, I think that that's enough right now. Now, there are a whole bunch of other books and, you know, you just have to watch the videos as I come out with this stuff. I'm, I'm going to do it until I'm told to stop. Yeah, and I, and because I, I don't want to risk, I don't want I, I I want to finish my race. My wife wants me to finish my race. Um, we 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 know we had started to have a lot of paranormal stuff happen in our house with all that data in our house, and so we had a lot of like weird things happen. And um, you know, there is one person I don't know if he's here. I'm not going to mention his name, but he knows who he is. He's part of this. He's part of giving me the information. And uh, they stopped him, but I heard that he is back out again. And um, you know, I want to contact him and talk to him. He's he's in here. I just don't see him right now. But I have not talked to him in many many years. But he spilled the beans, and he ended up being right 20 and 30 years ago, as well. He's in here, and um, you know, I want I'm I'm wanting to reconnect with him because he can see now that I'm not holding back like he didn't hold back. But um, at least he's still alive. He, but they incarcerated him. There's a fine line with this stuff. Okay, so in the remaining time, I want to kind of explain to you about Nimrod and uh, how all this happened and why we were dealing with what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with is disembodied en entities. So you gotta remember that every, everything that you're dealing with down here that is 
what uh, invisible phantom they they used to have bodies they were disembodied by the flood so god knocked them out of the realm and used the fact that the world had fallen and that we don't see everything he 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 used that to lock them out and then he said he told abraham the concept of faith faith is sight but it's, it's God giving you the ability to see into the other realms that are invisible now, but they didn't used to be. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes. So the idea of faith is that it's still there and it's yours if, if, that's, if that's what God says. The earth is yours. You have dominion over everything. I mean, if he told Adam that and he told Noah that, why can't he told, tell the, us at the cross that? Right? Okay, so the narrative is, is that, um, and I'm gonna get into this this afternoon, is what I was talking about last night. Satan wants to fragment us and impart to us in our perceptions, in our understanding, and wants to fragment our personalities so that we cannot co- operate as one. So he does it on all the, other, all the realms. So he separates us from each other because somebody doesn't like your hair, they don't like your car, they don't like that you have an airplane. They, they separate you because you did 80 books and they've not done none, but they can do one and I'll help them. So what happens is you, separ- you get separated because of, 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 of a, a device of spirit. When Satan knows that we are only effective together and that we're all in this together, there is no competition and that we're all doing the same thing for the same reason, for the same person. And that um, just because you pray in tongues louder than somebody else doesn't mean you're spiritual, but at least they're praying in tongues. And um, you know, at least people that give are giving even if they're doing it for the wrong reason. You know, if they're preaching a gospel for the wrong reason, Paul said, Paul said, Jesus said, well, at least they're preaching a gospel. Maybe it's for the wrong reason. But at least, Paul said, the, at least it's being preached. But they're not with us. Amen. You know, same spirit today. Okay. So we've been introduced, essentially with Jesus Christ, we've been introduced to something that is beyond what's in existence on the earth anymore. So Adam and Eve used to walk into these things. But when it it fell, when everything fell, we we lived less and we we didn't participate in everything. It, It just got less and less. We were separated more to where our souls start. Listen, everybody listen. Our souls started to fight our spirit. And then Hollywood and all the media came in to reinforce that. And then they started, they couldn't kill you, so they had to invent ways of killing you. You know, it's in your ketchup, it's in everything. Okay? It's in Captain Crunch, you know? So they had to, like, make it so your body started to deteriorate faster because it wasn't wasn't going fast enough for them. So they, they, it's hard to kill a human because of the way we're made. So they ha- there has to be poison. Okay, so this doesn't seem spiritual, but it is because if, if you're not feeling well today, I don't care how much you prayed in tongues. I mean, you, you need some help. If you're being tormented mentally, then you can pray in tongues and be walking in the spirit and, and yet you're tormented in your mind. You have discrepancies. You have all kinds of things that you need help with. And so that's what Satan is doing. He's trying to create a bigger gap between the body and the soul and the spirit. Is that okay? Everybody understand that? So these entities have taught how to separate people. And so... Governments that want to be dictators, dictatorships. Who in here is in the intelligence field that's spying on me right now? <laughs> because they're here. They're, they're here. They're in every meeting. 
I was just going to try to trick them and they'd see if they'd raise their hand and then say, oh my God, <laughs> and we'll get a picture of you and then you're, we'll get a picture of you and we'll put you on the wall. These, these entities have presented themselves from another planet being very, very uh, well advanced and they've, they seeded us and they're, they're watching over us and, and uh, it's time to intervene. But they really have deceived the people that were in, that were in these, these, but they, they said, listen, you know, this is how you can dumb people down. This is how you can, you, you know, you get them into rejection. You get them into, you, 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 you get them to play golf, which is an impossible sport unless you do it seven <laughs> times a day. I'm serious. They set, they set you up so the kids are watching this. Like, I want to be a professional ball player. It's like, do you realize that it's less than 1% of, of, of everybody that does this that actually gets a, a position? And once you get it, you find out the game's rigged anyway. So unless you work in Las Vegas, I mean, how, you know, it's no, there's no advantage. I'm just kidding, but I'm not. I'm not kidding at all, but I am. I didn't say what I just said. But here's the thing is, is they, they route your children to be a certain thing. It's a setup for failure. Nobody wants to be, nobody wants to be something that we need anymore. And then, and then when, you get, when you get older, you find out that everybody you tramped on to get to where you are, they become your boss. <laughs> or you end up having to work with them. So you, you know the culture, the corporate culture, the, the way that we're thinking has gotten into the church. So now pastors, pastors have got to where they say, well, you know, this is what we'll do. And they start to, to strategize ahead of time on how to do things in order to keep the people at bay, keep them right where they want them. Instead of making them accountable and disciplined by the word of God to where they're soldiers, and they would never do the things that they're doing in your congregation if they were taught and disciplined. You know, you'll end up with seven people, but at least those seven people will take a bullet for you. And you only need one, right, Pastor Wayne? You just need one person to take a bullet for you. That's all you need is just one good person, you know. But you can't find us. You want to know? Because everybody wants their own ministry. It's like, okay, well, then that means you have your own bills. But it's so funny is, is at how many ministers and ministries are asking me for money. But they were like not even knowing if I was going to make it a year. Yeah. And they were like, no, you know, I want to do my own thing. It's like, so all my friends are doing their own thing. It's like, but now the plugs are being pulled because the Lord's not going to allow this. He wants unity. Everybody needs each other. You don't want your own ministry. Just tell me. Just to, I'm just telling you. You know, this is, this is the interesting fact. When you talk to pilots, they don't care what's inside of the saucers. They just want to fly it. Now think about that. Think about that. Pilots... Every pilot, like, like uh, Chris here, Captain Chris, he flew F-18s off of ships, and he, he flies with me now in the fighter jet. But he knows the, some of those guys that are testifying before. He knows of them. Those are the real, they're, they're the real guy. He says those, are, those guys are a real thing. But every, like, even before Congress, the pilot said, we don't care what's in them. We just want to fly them. Because they embarrassed us. They clocked those things at 30,000 miles an hour and at least 30 to 40 Gs. They went from 80,000 feet down to sea level in front of them in less than a second. And they knew where they were going next and went there 60 miles away and waited for them, even though that th those things didn't have the flight plan they had. In fact, one of the guys said, we didn't even have the flight plan yet. They gave it to us. And that thing was that we were chasing it was out there waiting for us 60 miles away, knew where we were going to go next. It was waiting for us. So these are guys that had the right reaction to this. They saw the technology, but the things inside, the things inside is what you're being told
told to focus on in the coming days is those entities So picture this, all this stuff that's going on around us right now. Sometimes it bleeds through into the physical, it gets on film. Where's the Valorans at? Are they here? Did they go home? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well no, your dad, your mom, where are they? Okay, anyway, you know, I, I call them because I call them, they're, they're local with me. You know, we, we, have, we have a big a big building, we have a lot of storage and things like that, but every now and then something will come on the film and trigger, it, it'll be infrared, and there's different spectrums that cameras pick up, and so if you have a certain spectrum, and that's what would happen with us in airplanes, we could pick up objects visually that the, that the uh, controllers didn't see, and then certain radar, we couldn't, like our regular radar, we couldn't pick it up. It's okay. At ease, you can go back to your, t it's fine. Uh, the, but then there is a Doppler radar, which is a different frequency, and we could pick up the image of these things with that. But the controllers couldn't pick them up. Either that or they were lying, but I don't believe they were lying. I, I mean, I, one time here in Phoenix on South Mountain, when they had surrounded me, I called and, I, and they said, we have nothing, you're the only one up there. I go, well, could you just, take your eyes off your radar and look out the window. That's what I told them. And they're like, what do you want to do about it? And I go, what do you want to do about it? <laughs> and they, went, they, they were like, they didn't want to do anything. Well, you've seen these lights and you've seen all this stuff. I mean, you live here. It's like a circus at night. It is, it's like a circus. I was so glad I got to, the Lord sent us away. We were having all kinds of bizarre stuff happen, you know? But I'm telling you all this now because they never left. So Gilgamesh was Nimrod, went over into Sumer and Ur the Chaldees. So God went to Abraham and plucked him out of that area and said, I'm gonna make you a nation. He picked a fight with the devil using one of their own. Do you realize that the, the seed of Abraham is, is really an Iraqi? <laughs> that he was a Iraqi, Sumerian, Chaldean, Kuwaiti. He was right there in that area and God said, now your name is Abraham and you're the, the father of everyone. Okay, when he did that, he, it was a counter against this, the serpent seed. Does everybody understand that? We're, we're dealing with the serpent seed because God, it's the first reference was him. He, he said that. He said this seed of the woman is going to fight the seed of the serpent. Okay, so he picked the fight. He's the first mention of it. So why won't we talk about it? The things that confronted me when I was, when was taken down in those caverns, the thing that confronted me was a very high up being that confronted me. And this was in 1981. At the Assemblies of God College, I went to the head of the Assemblies of God Church. 3,300 people. Pastor Frigidaire was pastor there. <laughs> and all the head honchos for the Assemblies of God were there. And this is my, I mean, I'm a Christian for less than a year. And I'd given up the Air Force Academy to go to Pastor Frigidaire's church. And um, this, I'm just telling you, you got to understand me. I'm not going to change, so don't try to change me. Because you need, you need people like me around you because you need to become these people. You need to become more like Jesus. Jesus didn't put up with this stuff. He said, you're, you're going. You're going. You're leaving. He would just drive them out. Period. 
He wouldn't in any way give them their requests. So I'm sitting there just a couple weeks in this, and this, this, this it was a guest speaker that night, and it was a lady. I can't believe it. It was a lady actually speaking, you know, a minister. Can you believe that? And the head of the Assemblies of God Church, a lady. And she was really cool, but she wasn't as cold as Frigidaire was. She was just cool. And she was like, she was so cool. You know what she did? She's the guest speaker. I mean, can you imagine getting invited to the head church and assemblies of God and speaking? And you're a woman? And they hit her by giving her the, the evening service, you know. Because all the head honchos wouldn't be there, you know. <laughs> Is this too much? I'm sorry. Am I being mean? Okay. I could, I could tone it down and then you'll be lukewarm the rest of your life. I mean, <laughs> is that what you want? <laughs> you got to be hot, man. The demons have to scream before you get to your city you're going to. Amen. <laughs> okay, so she was so cool, she made the driver stop and pick up a homeless person and take them to church to hear her message. <laughs> that's, what, that's how this all started. She made, they're, they're like, well, we don't do that. It's like, well, you ought to try it, you know? But you ought to try like reaching out to the homeless, you know? But anyway, they, they brought her in and they brought her in and they set him back in the back because he smelled. And um, so during the service, as she's speaking, she was actually anointed. Can you believe that? A woman being anointed. Like, I'm just kidding, of course. But they, she was like so powerful. And the devils were like, they're not used to that, okay? Because they're not, they're used to like it staying at 32, 33 degrees in there, you know. <laughs> and it got hot, just like it did when Jesus came into that first synagogue. And the, the devils started manifesting through the leadership on the front row. And that man fell down and started manifesting. And then they wouldn't ask him back again after that because, see, Jesus is a troublemaker. See, nothing was wrong until Jesus showed up because it was all wrong. Okay, so this man gets up. He's fully chalked with devils. I can hear them all talking. He's arguing with himself as he walks by me in the middle of the sermon. And he's walking like a zombie. Like, like the demons are making him walk. Like he's not, he's still sitting back there. He doesn't want to do any of this. He just wants a meal and go home. But his home is, he doesn't have one. So he's fine with this. It's a, this church is kind of cold, he thinks, but at least it's not raining in here, you know. It's snowing, but it's not raining. But anyway, I'm like looking and you know, like, you, you understand, I just came from a security, armed security job, at my, and um, like, like, like uh, I'm thinking, I just got this job, and I'm thinking, why aren't the ushers stopping this guy, you know? And he walks the whole way up, and he comes right up here as she's preaching, and she stops, and he just goes like, he goes just like this. My room and I are right back there. He just leans back and levitates. He levitates in front of everybody. And he looked like the arch in St. Louis, you know? Just like. And I'm thinking, you know, I've only been saved about a year, but, but I've killed the lion and the bear. And this, this giant's about to become bird feed. I'm gonna feed him to the birds. You know, because I don't know any better. I'm a new Christian, you know, thank God. So I. I told my roommate, he's like, don't do that, man. No, you can't do that. Like, I go, somebody's got to take this thing out. <laughs> so I, I got up, I got up, and I just, uh, I, just, I just did what David did. How dare you defy the armies of the living God? I just like, <laughs> I did. I started rebuking it. And the thing, like, uh, the, he, the demons started freaking out. And they said, they, he, they, he said, the demon said, you know, we've come to, um, destroy America and we've come to expose hypocrisy in this church and I said well thank you for that but as far as <laughs> destroying America <laughs> I'm serious start prophesying in the name of Satan and it even sounds like some of the prophets today about the doom and gloom it sounds it's the same thing it's a wrong spirit they're all you know they're all your friends 
but they ain't speaking from the Spirit. I mean, I'm building you up because we can take these things out. We got to build each other up. Like I said to the students yesterday, God is easy, people are hard. That's what I found out. So I'm thinking, I just want to go back to the Air Force Academy. You know, Senator Hines was the one that was promised me a slot the next year for Pennsylvania. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to tell him I'll, I'll take that slot. Because there were 3,300, and I was runner-up out of 3,300 applicants from his office. And he said, you'll have it next year. And then I found out, you know, that it's all rigged anyway. But I mean, you know, I thought, well... If this is what I just, I left uh, F-16s for this, I'd rather just go back to the F-16. I, did, I thought that, I go, it's not too late. I thought, I don't, I, I left religion. This is a powerless religion. So after he prophesied, he fell because he lost his power. The, the, the demons started to freak out because they thought King David was talking to him. But it was just Kevin, you know, but I was like, <laughs> And um, the ushers came and stopped me. Instead of helping him and stopping him, they, 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 they took me and stopped me and told me he's not demon-possessed. He's just hungry. So my roommate wanted to know, like, he's like, what, like what's, uh, what's going on here? He was, so he actually... He actually was the one that took this guy back to the streets. They gave him a bag of groceries. So he's on his motorcycle with this guy. And the guy's still prophesying in the name of Satan. And they gave him groceries and they, 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 they uh, dropped him off. Okay, so my, that friend, I'm, I, I went home. I, got, I got, went home, went to the, the dorm. I'm a brand new Christian. I said, Lord, why didn't it leave? And why did the church stop me? And um, audibly, he gave me the scripture verse that says, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting, this type of demon, okay? That's what he gave me, but he didn't say the verse. He gave me the chapter and the verse. And I looked it up, because I didn't know the Bible back then. That's why I was in Bible school. And I go, okay, and I, I was crying. I fell asleep crying, and that's when I woke up to this entity at the foot of my bed and he was upset with me I've never seen anything like it since I was taken to the caverns and I saw all the sacrifices and I saw all the stuff that you don't want to hear about that's happening right now with our children and with people in Hollywood drinking blood and all that I saw all that in the caverns see they never left they're down there and they come up. So that's the real narrative. And the government knows this. But they don't want to tell you because there's not that much you can do about it, they think. Okay. But it's interesting is, is that there is data that shows, like my friend that I just showed you, he was given a book by an intelligence agency that was on religion that was given to them by these entities. It was a thousand pages. It's about this thick. He said that he had to read through it. He wasn't allowed to take pictures. He was working on this craft. But in there, these entities said that they view humans as containers. And I have other documents to show that the, the, the government documents where they were told how to prepare a human, this is government projects, to prepare humans to be inhabited by entities. How they can break them down mentally and, and, and uh, through food sources and mental and using religion. See, how is she gonna know about this stuff unless I just tell you? So you, you at least be aware of it. Okay, so in this instance, um, this entity then said something to me in another, another language that I didn't understand what it was, but it hit me and I felt fear when he said it. But I remember the voice, and the voice was so strong that it actually shook the building. But I was, I was in a, some sort of vision or something, I don't know. 
I thought I was awake, but I don't know if I was or not. And a lot of these things that happen to me, I don't know what I am or where I am. I don't understand like how time stands still and we, all this stuff. I'm shown things that are supposed to happen and then they don't happen and he, the Lord shows me it's gonna be stolen. He tells me, okay, this is what's supposed to happen but this is what's gonna happen. And then that's how we formed all the warrior fellowships because I was told that it was gonna go bad and that they were gonna create something so that it would mess up what you know happened four years ago. They had to because there's no other way to stop it. So I was shown things as God's intention, but it's, it's conditional based on human participation yeah. or the lack thereof. Okay, so this entity said something, and you need to know this because this is happening to your kids right now, and they, they don't want to talk about it. This is happening to you, and you don't want to talk about it. But I'm telling you, I believe you. I believe you. If you would tell me something, there, I'm not gonna sit and roll my eyes. I'm gonna say, well, what can I do to help you? Because I know how to help you. Because no one, the church is not gonna address these things. This isn't gonna get me on supernatural. You start talking about this stuff and it starts hitting the fan. But why are these things so popular? Why do they have millions of views when somebody talks about these things? It's because people are actually encountering it, but they can't file it right. They don't understand this, the realms. But you do after today. These things are coming back and forth. They're interdimensional. And you're dealing with them in your community. Okay, so at that point, the Lord told me to get up out of my bed and walk around this entity, which was about nine feet tall. And he had a hood on. It's a brown robe. I started laughing at him. When he was, and he was talking to me in another language, but the Spirit of God came on me and all fear left because I was paralyzed. I wanna tell you, I've never felt what I felt that day. Now, to tell you the truth, because I wanna freak you out, I also had months before that, I had just gotten to college, brand new Christian, don't know anything, think I know everything, but I don't. My dad tried to help me, but I almost had to get killed to find out that he was right and I was wrong. I don't know everything. Welcome to teenagers. Okay, so when I got saved and Jesus appeared to me, he said, so that you're, he said, I've called you as a mouthpiece for me. He said, you're going to be my battering ram. You're going to be my, my you're going to be my plumb line, my, my battle axe and my measuring rod. And he said, he said, you're not going to be liked by, by everyone. What, what he meant was no one. But he was trying to be nice with me. He said that. He appeared to me two days after I got saved. And he said, no, I'm, no you know, I am, I am just graduating from high school. And he says to me, so that your message is not compromised, I'm going to preserve you for many years. He said, so you're not going to the Air Force Academy. You're going to Bible school. He said, then... You're going to go, you're, after you're finished with school, he gave me the exact age that I would be hired with an airline. He said, you're gonna work for an airline and retire from that airline. And this is why he told me that. So that you will never be manipulated by money so that your message stays pure. So that I, you know, that when I sat with Sid Roth after the first show, he goes, there has never been anyone like you ever. And he said, your job at Southwest is done. I guarantee you, you're going global. And I was at breakfast with him. And I said, no, I, thought, I was just telling my story. And I don't want to be global. I just want to go home. <laughs> he goes, it doesn't matter. He says, you're everything that the body of Christ needs. They need somebody that, that is relatable. 
He says, you're perfect. You're a flight attendant. You're not a minister. You're, you've been in a, in a career. You know, who, who stays at that job for 30 years, you know? And so it did happen. So I was at Southwest Airlines for about, I'd say two years. I was on an airplane after this incident in college. I never had that entity encounter him again. But I asked the Lord, can you tell me, and I hope you're all listening to me. I asked the Lord, what did he just say? And this is what the Lord said. This is, this is for you, all you pastors here. The Lord said, you can't handle what he just said. I was not ready at the time to hear what the enemy had said to me. I was not ready. Just like a lot of you before this session were not ready to hear. But you are, you are ready. Because you, you have to be now. You can't hide in the sand about these things anymore. The Lord said, you couldn't handle what he said. So for those years that went by, I went through college, I went through assemblies, I went through Rama, and then I got hired with Southwest Airlines and I was on a flight in the San Diego from here. Short flight, full, juice and coffee at the time, so it was, it's gonna be easy. You get, you get about 11 minutes to serve, that's easy. I had 30 people in my section. I'm just joking, it's impossible, but we did it. Because <laughs> you get about 11 minutes on an hour flight because 20 minutes is up and 20 minutes is down and you can't do anything in either one of those segments because it's too bumpy. So you get about 11 minutes of cruise and then you gotta start down. Okay, so during the time when I was at Southwest, I'd be praying in spirit, feeding the poor every night. And I said, Lord, why am I here at Southwest? I, I could be a pilot. Why am I a flight attendant? And what did that entity, I would every now and then bother him, what did that entity say at the foot of my bed in, at the Assemblies of God College? I kept bothering him about it because I, I, I knew in my mind, and I'm telling you this because I knew that when the Lord could tell me that, that I had matured. Wow. Oh, like I wasn't allowed to read the book of Enoch until just recently. I'm trying to show you something here. You gotta to mature to the point where you can di dissect and discern everything. And, and know that there are certain things that are not correct. And know that, and know what are correct and what you're supposed to focus on. So he told me, he said, and he took me back to that in a vision, and I stood before that being and I heard him in English. I kid you not, it was just like it replayed. And this is what the being said to me. I shall search you out and I will eventually find you and I will kill you. Okay, so back to San Diego. Now I'm just trying to show you that these things never left and that they know where you're at and they have plans for you and they have plans for your children. It's all, and they're gonna work with the government, they're gonna work with your pastor. If he's not hot, he's not. Yep, yep. I'm telling you, you can't be, you can't be in between because that's, that's freaky. Yeah. You should be an outpost in your city. Angels should wanna come and help you in your service. Yes. Angels should want to come and stop at your house yes. on their way somewhere. Yes. I'm telling you, they, well, you, Kathy, didn't it happen to us? Angels, groups of angels would come and flood our house while we're here. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. I'd be in my backyard and I'd be running in, I'd be walking through things. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, what, whoa, what is that? It, and it was angels. There was, 30, there was like 30 angels standing there. They were all talking. And then they realized I could see them. And I go, what are y'all doing? And I said, what you doing, you know? <laughs> and I'm serious. If you don't believe it, it's okay. You still take a book for free. I don't care. Listen to me. This, these things should be happening to you. You should be having help. The help that I had, they said, well, 
were here because of, and he named the minister. You might not like him, but the angels were there to help him, Benny Hinn. And um, this is just right up here in Desert Ridge. And they were all in my yard, and they said, well, Benny Hinn's coming in, we're here, we came early, and you got, this is what they said, you get it. So they said, we've chosen this place to meet. And so I looked, I didn't know, I, I'm just telling you what happened, you know, and you can, you, this is what you have to do. You have to do investigation. So I went on his website to see if he was actually going to be in Phoenix, and he was. I didn't know it. I didn't go. I didn't have to go. I, his friends were actually fine with me. Like, I, his spiritual friends, I said, you know, guys, you want to come have a meeting here, you know, in my yard. I didn't go to Benny Hinn. Amen. His help came to me. There was no offering. <laughs> Amen. So the flight attendant on the descent comes up to me, which is not good. If a flight attendant has to come from the back to the front on descent, when it, you're just trying to throw things and make it look like you did something to secure the, your back galley and all that, and you're trying to get people to stay seated, and all of you become like 14-year-olds on a plane. I don't know what happens to y'all. But, <laughs> but I, had, I had this flight tank come out because you've got to get back here. This lady is threatening to light the plane on fire because she does not like you. I go, she doesn't like me. Who, I'm not even in her section. I haven't done anything wrong. She goes, well, she's like, she knows who you are, and she said she wants to kill you. And she had lit a fire. She had taken the, the, sp- the magazine, the, our airline magazine, which is actually pretty good. It's just not a fire starter, but she was using it as a fire starter. She, she had ripped the pages out and she had gotten a lighter and she had started a fire there. So it's kind of weird. And you know, I see Lynn back there, flight attendant. I know there's other flight attendants in here, but it's really weird how we get, we get a certain way when something happens. We've been trained for years. And then when it happens, we just stand there and look for someone else to, well, are you going to do CPR? You know, you do it, you know? you know. And everybody wanted to go notify the captain because that was like th- the easiest thing to do. And then it's like, no, no, you know, then I got to do CPR and I got to revive this person and they're in cardiac arrest. And um, So we're always waiting for someone else to do it. So I said, get the coffee pot. So I get the coffee pot and I just throw the coffee pot on the fire and on. I, I might have hit her, you know. <laughs> okay, this is what happened. Is everybody listening? Yes. She, as I walked to the back to get that, her head rotated the whole way around like a, an owl. And she got on the ground and slithered like a snake. She had no backbone. And we didn't have cell phones back then. I would have taken a picture of it. <laughs> so we had to restrain her, hold her till landing. They could not get her uh, apprehended. So they put her in a, they literally had her in a straitjacket. And on the way out, uh, the police officers had her and these medical people, and they had her in a straitjacket. So she couldn't move anything. She turned her head the whole way around in front of everybody. And she said, I will find you. And when I find you, I will kill you. The same voice. It was a man. It was the same entity's voice. Now, this is years later. It was the same exact verbiage with the same voice. And I've had this happen, and that's why I, I, Kathy remembers the day I called her. I said, it's time for me to quit. It took ple- eight police officers to take these people off. When I walked back there, 15 people manifested. It took eight cops. They had to carry them off physically over everybody's head because they wouldn't get off, and they could not apprehend them. Those people will never fly again. They will never own a bicycle again because they threatened to rape all the women. Now, me walking to the back to say hi to the flight heads, how could that incite that? 
Do you hear what I'm saying? Why did, why, why did they tell the flight attendants we were going to rape all the women? In front of their children, they said this. What caused those people who came on and said hi to me, but then when I walked back there, they said, we don't want you back here. Get back up front. That's what they said initially when I went through my walkthrough. And that should have been my sign. But then during the flight, they said, we got a call for uh, you know, military escort because uh, they're threatening to rape the women. And so we were going into Las Vegas from Pittsburgh. And so they were gonna call for the, for the fighter jets to come and escort us in. And I said, well, where are we? And he said, well, we're gonna start this in anyway. I said, well, just, just put it in. And I said, don't go to the gate and have the cops waiting to take these guys off first. Now, I'm not making this up. So what is happening when people start to shift over into that? All I'm doing is telling you stories because there is another side to everything. Why do people act up when they, get in, in, when they, in, when they start encountering authority? Why do they act up with a police officer? See, to me, a police officer is a safe place to be. If somebody's shooting at me, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go running toward them. I feel, I feel the opposite. When somebody's better than me, I don't get jealous and mad. I, I make them my friend and I say, teach me everything you know. So what causes people to manifest? What causes people to change their personality? It's the fact that there's entities that are trying to gain access to people. So you're supposed to shine and be the answer at that point. You're supposed to step in and be the solution to the problem. Amen? Well, it's, it's time. I know we haven't finished our coffee yet. I see Sven and Cal back there. Now listen, everything I've said to you is, is to help you. Is that not everything that you see is true. But everything that you don't see, it doesn't mean it's not there. The thing that I want you to be careful about is that you don't draw your conclusions based on things that are being said to you. You need to investigate for yourself. So the best, the best way to be is to be rooted in the word of God and know what God has, has said about us in the Bible and that he's giving authority. What is interesting is, is in this paperwork, in these documents of these studies, that these entities cannot operate if you mention the name of Jesus. They do not operate even if you have a cross on. They don't like the cross. I'm talking about the things that you call aliens. So, Rachel, can you talk just for a second? Okay, Rachel, you remember Paradise Valley Mall? Is this, it's probably not in existence anymore, right? They got Amazon now, right? But anyway, Paradise Valley Mall, um, Rachel, I met Rachel, and uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take an extra couple minutes, and all you pilots, thank you, just be being patient for a second. Rachel has a really good story. Um, the Lord spoke to me one day, when I was in Desert Ridge living there with Kathy, and I told Kathy, I said, you know that late girl named late Rachel? I said, the Lord just told me that, that she has had these encounters with these greys, and that they had been harassing her and things like that uh, previously, and that she, just, she needs me to talk to her, and I'm gonna make an exception and talk to her about what I know. I said, can you call her? Am I, am I right? Absolutely. I said, can you meet me at Paradise Valley Mall? So I didn't let her talk, I talked. I said, this is what's happened to you, right? And I told you, I told you what they looked like. I, and I didn't, I didn't even know your last name. You described everything in detail. Okay, just tell them the that. Person. Because the Lord sent me to somebody to help them with what was going on with them. If there is anybody in here that's having these things happen, we believe you. Okay? I want to set you at ease that we, we need to address things that are happening in the paranormal and, the, and the, that we need to be, be there for people and believe that what they're going through is something, something valid. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. First, welcome home, Rachel. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, I, grew, I lived here for 28 years and by the grace of God, I moved to North Carolina 
And when we landed, I was actually thinking of this testimony when we actually landed here. And I said, Lord, I am so grateful that you set me free. And just to preface what Kevin just said, everything he said is most accurate. When Kathy called me up and she said, will you meet us? I didn't know. I thought we were just going to have a talk. And he told me everything verbatim, what he just said is accurate. I never told anybody. I mean, I didn't want to be the crazy Christian saying, oh, I got abducted by aliens, because that's not really a conversation you have when you go to church. <laughs> at least not at Scottsdale Bible. That's where I used to go. And as you, anyone here knows, I used to go to CFTN. But so my story is before I met the Lord, I was Jew. I am still am Jewish, uh, but I didn't know I didn't know Jesus. So I'm assuming that's how they had access to me. So those gray, those gray things would pin me to the bed, and I couldn't move, and I'd scream on the top of my lungs. Nobody would come because nobody heard me, I thought. And then I would lose gaps of time. One time I woke up and my feet were dirty because I think they took me. And so I'm sitting there today, and I'm having a memory because a lot of my memories I still don't have, but God. So I'm sitting there, and I said, Jesus is this you giving me this memory or is this the enemy trying to mess with me today? So I went to the back, talked to a couple staff members. Here's the thing, guys. In the name of Jesus, those things have to leave. They have no power. Just like, because they're demons, and as Kevin was saying, they're interdimensional. They're not aliens. They're creating a story to dis for deception to create people to believe in something that's not real for the end time... Yes, okay, sorry. And so when I, <laughs> when I say in the name of Jesus, the enemy knows I know Jesus, okay? So it has to leave in the name of Jesus. And my heart when I share this, guys, is not to focus on the devil. It's to focus on Jesus. Because the enemy wants all the attention. He wants you to puff him up. He wants me to tell you what happened and all the stories. But I'm not going there. I'm here to tell you that it's a deception. I'll give you the bullets. It's a lie. If you want to come talk to me about it, I'm happy to pray for you and help you get set free. Because he wants you to stay boxed in in a lie because he tries to isolate you with this lie. The day Kevin and Kathy met with me, my life changed forever. They cared about me. <laughs> and I thank you, Lord, that everybody here, that they heard the truth this morning, Lord, and they received the truth. And I thank you, Lord. We are an army, your army, Jesus. We are your army. And as one, we are united. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind every demon in hell that tries to move through his people. In Jesus' name, and I thank you, Father God. Let the truth set them free. Lord, your word says, ha, Oh, the sum sets free is free indeed. So we thank you, Lord. I speak deliverance right now to your people. I thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we thank you, Father God, right now. Let the blood of Jesus be on your people. And I thank you, Lord, that no trauma can remain. It has to leave right now in the matchless name of Jesus. And we pray, Father God, their lives are just getting started. So we thank you, Father God, the dreams, the visions, the destinies you have for each of your people here, Lord God. Let them continue to walk out the pages written about them in heaven. The enemy is so scared of you walking in your destiny. You, Jesus, have all power. And we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' name.